Welcome to Wheels TV On Demand. We're wild about wheels. Hi, I'm Laura Bird here at the Peterson Automotive Museum in Los Angeles, California. Recently, a poll was taken of thousands of average Americans, asking them which car they felt was the most influential one of the century. The car most often named was the Volkswagen Beetle. It was the brainchild of German engineer and designer Ferdinand Porsche. Its name, Volkswagen, German for the people's car, revealed its simple concept when Porsche first pondered its creation in the mid-1930s. One of Porsche's biggest boosters was Adolf Hitler, who helped fund Porsche's early development of the Volkswagen. But following Germany's surrender to the Allies in 1945, Porsche was sent to jail, and the future of the Volkswagen may not have been so bright had the Marshall Plan not funneled millions of dollars into Western Europe to help rebuild their industries. The Beetle soon became one of the great industrial successes of the new Germany. In 1960, the bug was ready to make its American debut in no less a forum than NBC's Today Show with the late Dave Garraway. What are you going to put in all that space? Well, we are going to manufacture our car in this country. Are we in competition with you now on, uh, for example, the Volkswagen? As we see, it, the American market leaves so much room for a small, well-proven economic car. The VW's popularity gave it cult status. It was hip, cool, clever, and conscientious to drive a bug, and it was as much a part of the emerging counterculture of the 1960s as love beads and granny glasses. Since everyone's conducting a mileage test, we at Volkswagen thought we'd conduct one. So, we modified our body and our engine and used someone who didn't weigh much to drive. And we got 84 miles per gallon. Ridiculous. Nobody normally drives like this? That's precisely our point. Nobody normally drives like most of those tests. Although 1973 was the last year of the sale of Beetles in America, they continued to be produced in Mexico for export to other countries. For Americans, it seemed as though the lovable bug might be nothing more than another automotive fossil whose time had come and gone. But in 1990, as Volkswagen was presenting its new car lineup to audiences at Detroit and LA Auto Shows, it also displayed a vaguely familiar looking prototype called the Concept One, just to gauge public response. VW didn't have to wait long. The new generation Beetle was the most talked about concept at every show it attended. Volkswagen was besieged with requests from across the globe to produce the car, and seven years later, they did. The new generation bug had a host of new wrinkles, front as opposed to rear engine, water as opposed to air cooled, and available with a muscular turbocharged engine, dramatic departures from its ancestor. But the soul and spirit of the original bug could be seen and felt in every inch of the new car. Today it is cultivating an entirely new generation of admirers while filling the old guard with waves of nostalgia. From the Peterson Automotive Museum in Los Angeles, California, I'm Laura Bird. Thanks for joining us. Explore your passion for automotive entertainment with Wheels TV, the first television network dedicated to our automotive and motorcycle lifestyles. Get our free newsletter on wheels at wheelstv.net. Like everyone who loves to drive or lives to ride, we're all wild about wheels.